He was one of the sweetest people ever. He was always friendly. He loved to make friends with people. He was really curious, and he was like, he was really, really smart. Usma Chadri remembers her brother Usman. Memories are all she has now after he was killed by an LAPD officer four years ago. Cruz and his partner encountered one night very late in 2008 when they were on patrol in the Hollywood area. Usman wandered away from home and was sleeping in some bushes when he was approached by the two officers. Miscommunication between Usman and now ex-LAPD officer Joseph Cruz turned deadly. Cruz alleged that Usman became aggressive and lunged at him with a knife. In return, Cruz fired four shots at Usman, killing him. Well, I mean, I know my brother. I know he's not going to attack anybody like that. He's, not, he's never been like a violent person. For instance, like um, if he was in a situation where if somebody was upset with him, he would not respond. He would just stand there and he would just stare at the person or he would just like look on the ground. He would never respond back. Usman had difficulty responding when he was in trouble because of his autism. Not nice at hitting other people like that. Try asking more nicely. This afternoon, an 18-year-old autistic man from South Florida is in a coma, and his family says the Miami Police Department is to blame. An autistic teenager beaten by police, so say his parents who believe the officers should have known better. Today, about 1 in 88 children born in the U.S. will have some form of autism, a 23% increase from just two years ago. Unfortunately, as these numbers rise, so do the calls to 911. Thank you. Her autistic son jumped out of a moving ambulance and died on I-85. <laughs> now, across the country, police, EMS, and fire departments are undergoing training to learn and recognize the signs of autism and other developmental disorders. And they're doing so with a lot of help from Westwood, Massachusetts Fire Captain Bill Kanata and the Autism and Law Enforcement Education Coalition, also known as ALEC. Communication is a big issue with uh, people with autism, about 50% are nonverbal, 30% limited speech and they're difficult to understand. So that gives you about 20% where uh, speech and communication will be okay. So we, we show them different ways to uh, bridge that gap for communication. Training first responders about autism hits very close to home for Bill. His 21-year-old son, Ted, is autistic and nonverbal. Because of my son and uh, my my home life with Ted, I knew the challenges there. So what I want to do is share this in my professional life with my peers about what my challenges are and what they may come across. Because my, my son can be very aggressive. So uh, what can happen there is a firefighter or any first responder could come across a person that could be aggressive. So I've taken how my son acts at home and apply it to an emergency situation. Be patient and calm. These calls